Okay, so we're both starting at the same time. I put in lidocaine. J.O. puts in lidocaine. I coat the cornea with Occucote. And I just go straight in for my temporal incision. I don't create a shelf. My diamond goes parallel to the iris. Geo creates a little vertical groove and then goes straight in after that. I insert a bent needle cystotome to create a little flap. And then I just push that flap around and I create about a five millimeter capsular axis using the bent needle cystotome attached to Occucote. J.O. uses the, the, uses the same cystotome to create a little flap and then he introduces the Utrata forceps to complete his capsular axis. I use a chain cannula to hydro dissect at kind of like 10 and 2 o'clock and then I rotate the nucleus using the chain cannula. At this point I'm ahead of J.O. J.O. is completing his capsular axis using the Utrata. Now at a min minute and 58 seconds I'm starting phaco emulsification. J.O. is hydro dissecting using the chain cannula, he introduces it at the 12 o'clock position, and then he also rotates the nucleus. J.O.'s secondary incision and placement of his lens cracker or splitter or second instrument is like four o'clock hours away from his primary incision. My secondary incision is about two o'clock hours away from my primary incision. So at this point, we're both cracking the nucleus using a chopping or a divide and conquer technique. We're about in the same process of removal of the cataract at this point. And now three minutes and 20 seconds in, we're both done with FACO of the nucleus. I hydrate my secondary incision with a 27 gauge cannula attached to BSS. Here at three minutes and 40 seconds, we both start irrigation and aspiration. The video on the, my right side is brighter because I use more illumination from the microscope. The video from Dr. Odets is dimmer because he uses a dimmer setting. If you'll notice, you can see the reflection of the room lights now on Dr. Odets' cornea that were not there previously because I think at this point when he's loading his lens, he asks for the lights to be turned on. I'm still doing irrigation and aspiration of the cortex. Four minutes and 42 seconds in, he's putting his lens in while I am still polishing small cortical fibers from the posterior capsule. His lens is in. The capsular axis looks to be well centered and appropriately sized. We want the capsular axis, anterior capsular axis opening to be five millimeters 
in diameter or less, and we want 360 degree overlap of the IOL. I'm polishing the posterior surface of the anterior capsule. John is aspirating the viscoelastic from behind the IOL and in front of the IOL. Now I fill the capsular bag with OccuCoat. And I polish the posterior surface of the anterior capsule. I don't think that Dr. Odette polishes the posterior surface of the anterior capsule on a basic cataract surgery. J.O. is now hydrating his primary and secondary incisions. The reason why he places the secondary incision at a different location than I do is based on his technique and the secondary instrument that he uses to crack the nucleus. I have now placed the LI61AO lens into the IOL, into the bag. John is done with his surgery, six minutes and seven seconds after he started the surgery. I too am now removing viscoelastic from in front of and behind the IOL. As we spin the lens implant, uh, we can see small uh, cortical strands behind the IOL that will migrate from the periphery of the capsular bag to the area behind the IOL and we will frequently just lift the IOL and then vacuum out those small remnants of the cortex. So you can see my lens is now centered. The rexus is a little, maybe a little smaller than five millimeters, but it has 360 degree overlap of the IOL and it's well centered. I'm hydrating my primary and secondary incisions and now I'm done about a minute and a half after Dr. Odette. We just make sure that the eye pressure is normal and the incisions are self-sealing. And then we're good to go.